don't think I had expectations that it was going to catch on, but I thought if people, if, if, if a quarter, if a tenth, if a thimbleful of the people that watched The Verdict, which was a hundred million people, if just a few of those people tuned in, we probably had a shot at, at, at being something worth watching or talking about. I don't know if the subject matter is what made it different, except I think what it probably was was abject terror. I think all of the actors felt this enormous responsibility as well as this uh, enormous potential thud-like landing that we could all make on the ground if it didn't, if it didn't work, our whole bodies just pitching forward because, you know, I think there were a lot of expectations and some of them were probably like, hmm, how is this going to, is this going to be, is this going to work? And I think we felt that ourselves. So I think there was a, a sort of collective feeling of fear and nerves that made everyone, I think, hold on very tightly to each other. That was a very big, I was very uh, well aware, obviously, just because of what you say that is so true, that you have a, she has an iconic, there's an iconic image that you immediately think of when you think of Marsha Clark, and it's that hair, and it's those shoulder pads, and it's the way she uses her hands when she talks, it's that slight head tilt to the side when she's addressing typically the judge or, or the jury. Um, this is the third time I've played a real person, but the only time I was playing a person where there was such, uh, as you say, an identifying, uh, iconic, immediately identifiable way that, that she was. And, and I knew that people were very, very well aware of it. And it, again, it contributed greatly to my terror <laughs> because it wasn't just from a vanity standpoint, even though there was that moment, I'm not going to lie, where I put that wig on and they're painting dark circles under my eyes and I'm getting that little prosthetic mole placed just so. And I remember thinking, this is really, this is really no joke to be, this is going to be on television. This is going to be on television. And I'm going to look um, tired and have a really bad hairdo. And it, it just took that, you know, so many times in a, at least an actress's uh, career, uh, if you're lucky enough to have one that, that lasts any span of time, your beauty or lack thereof is always going to be somewhat part of the conversation. Um, so it was definitely not lost on me that this was going to be a moment of confronting in myself my own vanity and um, wanting to kind of chuck that out the window and be brave. And, uh, and actually the truth of the matter is, is that once I put the wig on and had a really good cry, no I'm just kidding, <laughs> I, uh, I was very excited ab about it and that I never ever ever had to think about what I looked like in terms of being attractive or appealing and it was incredibly liberating and freeing and I hope to God that I can take that with me to the next thing I do where that will not be part of the story necessarily. I mean, I hope I'm playing a toothless woman next time I'm working, but you know, those things don't come up that often. Mm -hmm.